Welcome to Garment. In this video, we're switching it up a bit. Instead of recreating a designer piece, we're stepping away from the conventional fashion world and having a look at an intimate, highly influential video game by the name of Disco Elysium. For a game known for its grim yet painterly aesthetic, one character truly stands out from the rest. And I am of course talking about our support character, Kim Kitsuragi, a soft-spoken, highly intelligent and modest man with an incredible sense of fashion. Today, we'll attempt to recreate his bomber jacket inside of Clo 3D and in a couple of weeks, we'll also look into manufacturing it and sharing the behind the scenes. So make sure you follow us on Instagram and TikTok at grmnt.studio to see the entire process from conceptualization to a final product. Before we jump right into the video, I'd like to thank our Patrons, and we're planning to start releasing exclusive content on Patreon, as well as the project files featured in these tutorials, and more. For just $5 a month, you'll also get instant access to our database of basic patterns that we use whenever we design clothing in-house. Let's get started. Here we are inside a clo. We want to first add our avatar. And then let's start with the basic male t-shirt. Maintain the current size. And as usual, we have to clean up the files. Because they suck. Who wears v-necks in 2022? It's ridiculous. Let's get rid of uh, the sleeves as well. Clean up the internal lines. Those at the bottom as well. Okay the dot on the side, convert this one into a curve point, do the same at the back, get rid of the dot, the lines, the markings in the middle, lines at the bottom, lines at the top, delete everything, convert this one to a curve point, delete the notches, okay press V, get rid of the curve points, as many of them as you can, while still maintaining the general shape. Let's simulate. I've upgraded my computer. It now has a i7-12700K, but it creates a lot of heat. So if you hear the fans in the background, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because of this processor. Okay, let's convert this to an internal line. Do the same for the back and then select that internal line. Come on, cut and sew. So we separate the components and work with symmetry between them. We need to then arrange them as such. So it makes a bit more sense, but we, it's a bit more tidy. One of the main problems that we have to solve is the fact that the shoulder at the back is extremely tall compared to this one. We want to bring them roughly to the same level, you know? But we want to do this arrangement only vertically, okay, here, perfect, let's sim again. Then we need to take care of the length of the jacket and it's extremely short. This is the one of the main features of the product, let's cut the panels down by 180. Okay, it's almost like a crop top actually. Then we need to take care of this v-neck. <laughs> this trashy, trashy v-neck. Let's select the point. For now, delete the Bezier curve handles because I prefer working always with the curve points as opposed to the handles. Press V, add a curve point. Cool, round it out a tiny bit. Perfect. And now let's bring the shoulders in because uh, the neck opening needs to be a lot smaller. So we can grab this point here, drag it for 25 for now. The one at the back. I'm seeing that this one has Bezier curves as well. And I want to delete them. You select the point, then the Bezier shows up and you delete the point, but not this one, not the segment point, because then you're gonna screw up everything. Press V, 
start shaping the neck there. Okay, sim, I wanna press B to make sure that the length of the segment is equal or close to equal. This one is 0 0.7 difference. I need to, uh, this is 188.5, the other one is 187.7. .7. I need to shorten this one by 0 0.7. Does this make a huge difference in the real world? Not really. It's less than a mil, you're not even gonna notice it and the natural stretch of the fabric will probably hide those differences. Okay, now at the front, I need to enlarge the opening here. We can see the point that I've created in the 3D window. Bring it down. Okay, perfect. Cool. Next thing we need to address is the opening for the sleeve. And we know that it needs to be a lot wider. We can bring this one down by 65 mil for now. This one down by 65. And there's another issue with the t-shirt, which I absolutely despise. And is the fact that those segments are not perpendicular to the ground. So when you're working with symmetry, you're gonna encounter a lot of issues. You need to grab the point, drag it out till you find this intersection, both lines vertical and horizontal if they look purple it means that they are perfectly at 90 degrees to one another and let's do the same on the other one sometimes it's a bit finicky and you need to really zoom in to find it out you can see it here okay now we have vertical alignment bring it down now we have horizontal and vertical alignment let it go press b as you can see it's sewn in two pieces i don't know why press n and sew it in just one piece so it makes more sense it's more manageable for editing and let's ensure yeah they're the perfect uh, equal length and now let's simulate when it comes to designing the sleeve openings you need to make sure that if i were to bring those two segments and stick them next to one another you need to make sure that there's a bit more curve to the opening you want it to look not like this like a vagina <laughs> Basically, you want it to be rounded at the bottom and we do that by selecting the curve tool and You can almost go fully horizontal with this point As long as you have another one at the top, it's gonna create this beautiful teardrop shape Which makes the outfit way more comfortable when you raise your hands so you know in the real world you want to wear this now you can grab this segment let's make it oversized let's drag it towards the right by say 50 mil for now i'm gonna see if we need to make further adjustments 50 on this one and as you can see it creates a bit of an issue we have to go back in and fix it so it stays more like this Again, teardrop shape. Then we can take the shoulder and extend it out, but I'm not gonna do it on the line that it's currently following. I wanna do it horizontally. And I wanna extend it by 25 for now. Same for this one, 25. We need to go back in and check, make sure, oh, there's a 0 0.3 mil difference, which in the real world, again, doesn't matter. But we are perfectionists here at Garment. So 0 0.3, B, zero perfect zero there we are and those of course are zero and zero we can simulate and here we have it we can select all of the panels press a Control a Control h sim here we have the jacket and it's looking beautiful you might not see it yet but i promise it's gonna be identical to the one that mr kitsuragi is wearing let's next create the sleeve and we do that by pressing s yes, open up the rectangle tool create whatever rectangle doesn't matter use the default size because we first care about shaping it and then we care about making it fit Given how this is more of a drop shoulder type of approach as opposed to the first tutorial on the Balenciaga crop blazer, we need to ensure that this slope is not as steep. We need to make it flatter and then we need to add another point which represents the front. The front panel usually has more of a definition and the one at the back is more straight, I would say. It's not... 100% necessary, you can design your clothes however you want to, but this is generally how it's done. 
Let's select the two segments that represent where the sleeve goes together by holding down shift after pressing Z. So 656.9, we need to open up the calculator. So 656.9 and divide it by the value that we have on the sleeve here. 579.9, 579.9 equals. And now we know that we need to make the sleeve 113.27% of what it currently is. Grab it by the corner so it goes both horizontally and vertically. 100, I forgot the number, sorry. 113.27. Perfect. And now if we measure those two together again, 656.9 and this one is, will you believe it? 656.9. Let's go into the 3D window. Let's select the arrangement points, select the sleeve and then Put the sleeve on one of those arrangement points. Yeah, it's a coincidence, but it knew that this part, the defined part, had to sit at the front. Now, we want to select, we can use the M tool for this. We know that we want to start at the front and at the back, or you can do it the other way around, but this is my tutorial, so if you want to do yours, do yours. <laughs> let's start with the longer segment for now. Hold down Shift. And now let's sew that component to the following two components. That's why we're holding down shift. Start from the front, go towards the shoulder, start from the shoulder at the back and go towards the point where the two components meet. Okay. And if I press B and check on those sewing lines, they are perfect. We also know that we need to press N, connect those two together. Okay. And we need to shorten the sleeve by quite a lot. This is an iconic piece of garment, especially in the gaming world, and it tends to be extremely short and bulky at the same time. This is what we want to have here. Let's get rid of those arrangement points, select the sleeve, control H and sim. Brilliant. Now we can select the sleeve, control D and create it symmetrically on the opposite side, control H, sim. We have to take measurements of the waist and we have to take measurements of the hand and we want to make those ribana components equal or slightly larger than the actual measurement on the avatar. Pressing shift W that's gonna hide the clothing it doesn't delete it it just hides it as you can see it's still in the 2D window and then we need to take a surface circumference measure avatar hold down the left click here surface circumference avatar. We know that we want the sleeve to go around this area, maybe slightly higher up, but it's fine. 260 mil. And we know that we want the jacket to end somewhere around the waistline. 823.1. Let's start with the 260 on the arm. Press S, rectangle tool. 260 by, let's do 60 mil for now. We can always adjust later and sew it there. S, create a segment A to 3.1 by 60, press M and we're gonna sew the, let's do the longer on the smaller. When you know that you want to sew a few segments together and they know they're gonna match, you don't need to sew from the smaller to the larger, which is the lesson that I've been teaching you in the other videos. You only need to do that when you don't know the length of the segments. Hold down shift after I've selected this ribana component. Start from the back, go towards the front and as you saw the blue dot was indicated somewhere around here but that's fine because this element is much smaller than the actual jacket. Release shift, press shift and W to reveal back the components. And now we need to select this one here, right click superimpose side because it's sitting on the side. You can still move it around a tiny bit so you make sure that when you simulate it's not gonna collide. Superimpose side here as well and sim. Beautiful. Control D. Created symmetrically on the opposite side with the sewing. Control D, same for the other sleeve. Okay, it seems to be aligned perfectly. Let's simulate. Now we can select all the components, Control H because we no longer need the strengthening. Let's go to the back, select those two, Control H. We want to select everything and make it larger because I feel like the jacket needs to be slightly oversized compared to what it is now. And that of course created an issue here. <laughs> so we can divide one, divided, we made it 108%, so 1.08. 
we want to scale those Rubana components so they match the frame of the avatar. So I need to make it 92.59 of what it is. 92.59. Now we can sew it together there. And let's do the same for the bottom components, 92.59. Cool. We can sew them at the back and click, click. You can do it in the 3D window as well. Click, click. Perfect. But this one seems extremely large. I don't know why that is. Wait. Oh, that's why. Because <laughs> let's delete it. I haven't done it right. Sorry for that. We can hide all of the components, right? Shift W. And we need to go back to the measurement. 823.1 and divided by 2. 823.1 divided by 2 because we only do half of it. 411.55. 411.55 by 60 mil. And there we go. We finally have it. <laughs> You're gonna make mistakes like this. It's fine. Nobody is holding a grudge against you. M. Start from the longer one. Hold down shift. Sew it back together. Cool. There we have it. Much better. Now it actually makes sense. Control D to symmetrize it on the other side. And you can already sew the components together. Okay. Arrange it a tiny bit. And sometimes it does that. I don't know why. Next, we need to start using a new tool. And it's called a fill tool. And it's one of those components that are brilliant to use because they're quite intuitive, but at the same time, they're going to kill your computer. This is probably the biggest PC killer in all of Clo. Let's select all of those components and bring them down here. Okay, now you press A, select the ones that you've created or the first ones, it works both ways. And here you're going to see in the simulation properties, you're going to see the filler option. And this is new. This only applies to segments that have been created as filler components. And I want to grab this component, for instance, move it on the side and show you that this one is sitting right underneath. As you can see, so you can apply a different material to it, but it's also going to help puff up the jacket so it looks more like the real product does. Let's select all of them together and the reason there is a reason why I select them together and it's this tab here. Wait, let's type in 45 grams for now when for kilting distance, let's put in 200 mil. Select all of the components, make them for now 12 mil, go into the thickness collision, make that 2 mil and the rendering one and press sim and as you can see now the jacket is starting to take shape and look a lot nicer than it did without this puffing up now let's connect the two panels at the back together it's gonna cause issues because we need to actually remove those panels and redo them and i'm sorry because i haven't done it before okay select the back panels move them up press b select the sewing line press merge a, move it here, and let's do the puffing up again. You can uh, repeat, <laughs> see if you learned it the first time or not. I'm gonna move them down. A, select all of them, and go back in with your settings. 40 by, what was it? Yeah, that's correct, 200. And take the realistic kilting line. Let's simulate again. If I were to do that just for this panel, it's not gonna sew them together. So it causes issues. You wanna make sure that you have all of the panels correctly done first, and then you want to take this step. I want to bring this one higher up. And how am I gonna do that? I have the option of starting a simulation and then dragging it manually, but that takes time and it can create a lot of collision issues. There is a better way of doing it. I press Shift W first. Then I go into my measurement tool and I want to, for instance, bring it up to this point. I create a measurement around his arm. This video is brought to you by PackPack.com. When you establish your online store, it can be incredibly frustrating to find a packaging solution that speaks in the same tone as your brand. 
Packpack makes it incredibly easy to customize everything from their tote bags, pouches, to their environmentally friendly cardboard boxes, and they also ensure industry-leading minimum order quantities, so you can start voicing your brand even when on a budget. Then I hold down the edit measure tool and find the attach to measure tool instead. Now I press shift W and I want to attach this component here to this measurement here. And if I were to simulate now, check out what happens. Without crashing, that's the most important part. Cloak can manage itself. It was quite aggressive, the simulation that we did. But as you can see, it works flawlessly because now it's been brought back up his arm. And stylistically, this is exactly what you need to have to make it look like the real product. Let's do it on the opposite side as well. Surface Circumference Measure Avatar. It has a beautiful, it just rolls off your tongue. Let's add the measurement here. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical with the other side. And the attach. Uh, measurement to avatar sim it looks as if it's gonna crash and probably if you have a low-end computer it might actually crash but it works for me so hooray let's now go and select some different fabrics for our piece of clothing and we want to go into fabric and type in nylon which is used for jackets of this type and this one is nylon matte if i'm not mistaken yeah we want to replace the default fabric with the nylon Simulate again, and as you can see, it's puffing up even more. It's a different kind of beast compared to the default fabric. We want to change the color of the nylon. You do that by selecting the fabric in the object browser. Then you go to the basic parameters texture, tick desaturation. That's gonna take the yellow out, and it allows you to replace the color with one of your own. And you could try and pinpoint it manually but there is of course there's always a better more accurate way you want to open up photoshop it's not 100 accurate but it's gonna do the trick for now we want to open up the image that we have as a reference zoom in and you can use the color picker in order to pin down a color so as you can imagine going into the shaded area different color going on the sleeve on the highlight different color let's try an average point which is probably somewhere around there copy this value and go back into clo paste this value and you might feel like you want to do a slight adjustment which is fine in my case it's this let's add the color select this segment measure it select this segment measure it and the total is 2 11.7 11.7 by let's do 60 mil as well so it's the same as the bottom piece and the sleeve okay press m start from left to right and i know that i want to start from here hold down shift start there and end at the front okay move it here as i told you it was easier when those two were separated because i knew that this component was sitting here and you can just start from here and from here makes perfect sense but you can still learn those things by having enough practice superimpose side Control h let's strengthen this segment here okay Control d bring it on the opposite side and sew those two together Okay, Control H, let's keep them strengthened for now. And we want to, let's open up the jacket. Press B, select this sewing here and this sewing here, delete. Okay, start the simulation. We can also take the avatar and change its pose a tiny bit because this is very unnatural looking. This is better. And as you can see, the sleeve line is supposed to be sitting slightly higher compared to the waistline on the reference that's very easy to modify actually we can just take this and shorten it down and the beauty of using the filling tool as you can see all four components are being shortened at the same time shorten it by 45 that looks a lot better actually and we can try and extend those segments a tiny bit let's do it by 25 
so it's more wearable not necessarily that this is how kitsuragi is wearing it but we can make it more livable extend it by 25 we're still gonna have a similar contrast because this one sits higher and here we have the beautiful jacket select the color pieces bottom sleeves we want to make them all a different material than the main jacket go into fabric type in rib enter and let's select this one for instance select the color Control h as you can see it's not quite realistic enough because it's very slim it's infinitely slim it has zero mil collision and rendering sorry uh, let's make it four mil here for the rendering let's make it four mil for the collision brilliant now go higher up and you're gonna find the curved side geometry which is ticked on 100 percent you also have the option of double sided which if i zoom in closer as you can see even though it's only one component in the 3d window it's shown as if the, it's made of two which is brilliant for our purpose let's also select this one for the cinematic view and i need to show you a trick up next select this texture edit texture 2d tool select one of the components but don't use those controllers here use the global ones i'm gonna zoom in closer so i show you exactly what it does i'm gonna use this one in the middle and scale it up so i'm moving my cursor up try again and as you can see it's affecting all of the components at the same time and that's incredible for when you want to change up the fabrics make it look different than what it currently does cool now if i were to and i've experimented with this enough to know that it's not gonna work when you have filling if you want to add a zipper let's select the zipper tool which is one of the worst implementations inside a clo i'm gonna show you why let's start for instance at the top on the left side click once go towards the bottom click once there as well and then we need to continue it on this segment click and then we need to end it right at the bottom which is here click click now i know that it's ended because it turned to dark gray let's now start adding it on the opposite side start from the top go towards that point that point connects to this one cool click now end at the bottom click 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 fucking click over and over and over and over 20 fucking clicks because Clo can't get its shit together that's cool and all it looks great for now let's select the zipper and instead of having the fasten zipper ticked on you want to turn it off cool and now let's simulate and somehow through magic it actually worked this time so i'm uh not gonna hate this time but the problem is that usually the zipper when you have filling will go inside of the jacket and that's gonna screw up your entire project but whatever I'm, I'm happy that it worked this time total width let's increase it to 18 mil let's increase the teeth width to six make it slightly more pronounced and select the zipper and let's make it the same brown color as the ribana let's try something like this oh that's the zipper teeth sorry that's not good you need to select the tape inside of the menu color make it brown baby cool great and um or we can make it black or whatever whatever color you guys want i'm not gonna stick 100 percent to the source uh color let's change the color of the zipper brown cool also we can make the avatar disappear just for a second and we want to change the lining so all of the components that are sitting here into something that we have on our website you can find them on garment.com slash efabric and you can purchase them and they're gonna look exactly like they do here so that's quite exciting let's choose the aqua this is one of the super high-end fabrics that we have if you are building something for a client who is a bit more i don't want to say pretentious but i just said it and if you want to check the colors i haven't exactly shown you guys this but you go into this color palette you add a different palette when you download the fabric from our website you get two files one of them represents 
the dot z fab which is the fabric itself with the physical properties textures normals everything you need but it also comes with this dot aco file which is a color palette so if you ingest it here those are all of the variants that we are selling on our platform and again they're incredibly accurate and as you can see this is the liver organ color if we were to change it to another one this is cinerous you read black pine tree grulo and if you go on our platform in the e fabric tab you're gonna see that the fabric uh let's find aurora right grulo there you go uh, this is the one that we are also selling there there's a part three so this is the one that we're looking for liver organ this is what it's gonna look like in real life rosewood quite red dark byzantium purple dark purple you have so many options and you have some pretty good offers if you're buying more right if you get five meters 10 50 and uh, for special orders you can get in touch and we can cut down on that price even further let's go back to our project here let's select all the components and make their particle distance five just for a second go into the simulation settings go into fitting accurate and i want to increase the number of cpus in use mine has 20 threads you can check it by pressing ctrl alt delete task manager and if you go into the performance cpu you can see how many threads there are because every box represents a thread i know i have 20 so i can increase the number and get the faster simulation let's sim and this is now going to look a lot more realistic compared to what we currently had let's just wait up because it still takes time it's still a computer killer no matter how many threads you have you're still gonna find that cloak and find a way to kill your pc everybody has their limits in terms of patience and mine are extremely high i have a super high tolerance for waiting for cloak to do its thing because i love it and it's changed the way that i think of clothing fashion in general and every time I wait for those simulations to happen, I go into an introspective mood. Hey, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. Let's try and add the patches. I've created, first of all, this label, not designed in Paris. And we want to add it here on a circular patch right uh, where the chest area is. We need to unsymmetrize those two components. So select all of them, remove linked editing. Now I can add it because it was adding it on the opposite side as well. Let's do 120, let's make it bigger. The jacket looks a bit puffy. Go here, let's decrease the weight. Let's make it only five grams. I knew this was gonna happen, but as you can see, the zipper went through. And this is why I don't recommend using the zipper tool. Okay, I'm gonna make the particle distance larger because this is ridiculous wait for it oh you need to press it right when it unfreezes itself that's the secret right as it's about to, boom press it then yes it stopped okay select all of the components again and instead of five mil make them 10 mil it's gonna be easier on your computer and let's strengthen those here and get rid of the zipper simulate again stop the sim at least the 10 mil you know that you can stop it safely select those two components and unstrengthen them cool now let's go back to adding this circle this is how you do it you select those internal lines with the z tool right click cut i pressed cut and sew i said cut but i pressed a different option let's get rid of the sewing then next press z select those lines here right click you want to offset as internal line and do free mill Okay, now select those components here, right click, offset pattern outline, do free mill, so the same as you did there. And now we need to sew them, not on where they were, on the internal line that you have now. Make sure that you're aligning the sewing correctly. Okay, now select the patch and right click, superimpose under, this is the secret. Now you want to, let's move from fitting accurate fabric simulation, let's move to normal. You can see it here, the patch. And you can also see that the lining is coming apart because we deleted the zipper, I believe. 
I'm gonna redo the components inside. Let's first finish the patches and then we can come back and redo the filling. Go into the fabric, let's select the default fabric for now, add it here and then you want to add a graphic to it. So you press the graphic to the pattern tool. I have it on my desktop, not designed in Paris, press OK and it's gonna appear on top of your fabric. I never like doing the obvious I would say, so I'm just gonna offset it, let's say, to this area and I think it looks quite cool. Let's simulate again, let's see what happens without the filling. We can bring back the avatar as well. I think it looks quite cool, even like this. It's not too big of an issue. Then we need to add one on the back. And we're gonna use exactly the same technique. So we go here. Let's remove this line. Remove linked editing. Use the trace tool to delete this line. You need to do it twice for whatever clo god clo reason. Okay, and we need to use the internal rectangle tool. Let's go from here to 50 by 120, let's say. Hey, that looks actually quite good. I, I should probably move it slightly lower. Yeah, there we go. Right click, cut instead of cut and sew. Move the component top. Select those segments here. Offset as internal line. Do free mill. Select those components here. Right click, offset pattern outline, free mill. It stayed on the same value and sew it all together. Do it there. Make sure you don't sew it on the inside. You do it on the outer line. Right click, superimpose under, sim. And the reason why we do this, I haven't shown you in much detail, but when you go and zoom in, this looks incredibly realistic. And it's just like the real product. It has a 3D effect and it's quite cool. I love it. Okay, and we need to do the same here. Let's press this tool. It doesn't have a hotkey by default because it's not used very much. Okay, let's find a good ratio, probably something like this. Yeah, right click, cut, move it out again. Select, 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 right click, offset internal line, free mill, offset pattern outline, free mill, okay, and then N and sew it all together. You probably noticed that I've done a mistake and that is that I've created the cut on the opposite side as well. But it's fine, whatever. Superimpose under. We can remove the editing here. So remove linked editing. And this is whatever, it's an issue, just don't do that guys. Remove the linked editing before you do it. Okay, default for sim, sorry, wrong side. Let's go back here, default, perfect, and have a look at this beauty. How cool is this? Love it. Let's add the filling so we puff it up a tiny bit more. Select, 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 hold down shift while you select, click, 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 click. Bring them over and then let's do the settings from here. Let's do 8 grams, quilting distance, 200, 200, enter, okay. Now let's start the simulation and hopefully we have Kitsuragi's piece upon us. And it looks beautiful, I don't know, I fucking love it. I'll rock it myself, no issue whatsoever. Let's add a piece of clothing that we also have on our website. It's called a Huckleberry. Okay, add garment, press OK. Make sure that you arrange all the components before you start uh, putting them in the 3D space. Move them here so they don't interfere. Select those, Shift Q, hide them, select the pants, press 5, go from the top view, move it towards the front, create a circ- oh, we already have a circumference measurement, and just snap a few of the, a few of the points, snap them to the body of the avatar. Okay, Shift W, select the move tool, and simulate. 
And I think those two go incredibly well together. We'll probably need the shirt or a t-shirt underneath. But you guys can see the outfit coming together. Check this out. Buyaka. Thank you for watching this video.